welcome to Florian Models Kit Review Time. Something we have been looking forward to ever since the CAD drawings had come out. What happens basically, somebody spills it on the internet, it becomes onto like Facebook and all the social media and the buzz starts, okay? Then you always get the little quiet spell when you're not sure, and then all of a sudden, pop, it's here. Gone are the days where we used to have to wait years and years and years to be able to see a kit. This one was only sort of mentioned, what, six months ago, and here it is already. So what we've got is Meng's amazing M1A2. This is the Abrams with the Tusk 1 and 2 system on it. The Tusk system is basically the something urban survival kit. I can't remember what the T stands for, uh, but basically it's all the little pebbles, all the armor glass and everything around. It's basically a way of upgrading the standard Abrams into being able to survive in the urban environment. So obviously we're talking anti-sniper, obviously RPG protection, IEDs and stuff like that. It's a great little upgrade kit and has obviously saved many in Abrams in recent conflicts like obviously Iraq, Afghanistan, things like that. So Meng, let's face it, have become the top tier company for releasing armored kits. They've sort of surpassed all the usual suspects out there. Uh, their quality is usually second to none. So it's great to see it now in something that's a bang up to date kit. So down in the box, as we see some great arm, uh, artwork on the front. Uh, it's 135th scale, as you can imagine. All right. And uh, it's got a few new things happening as we were speaking about in recent builds. AK have jumped on this particular one, obviously with Meng, um, as we work our way through. So all the color call outs are now gonna be in AK something I don't like okay uh, this is the Tyrannosaurus range or TS as we see it down here so it's 026 is your kit number own treks don't they the airbrush people uh, a little bit about the actual um, there we go tank urban survival kit there we go that's what tusk stands for okay and uh, a little bit obviously about it you've got these quick codes as well which you can zap which will probably take you off to their website and make your way through like that so First thing you notice, it's a big box. It's a big chunky box. So I'm always wary because you tend to find out there's not a lot inside it, okay? But as you can see, look at that. Absolutely stuffed full of plastic. And when we say stuffed, we mean absolutely stuffed. So I'm busy going to dig down deep and we're going to make our way through and see exactly what we've got. Also, you know, this is really thick, okay? So we've got the usual manual, a little bit obviously about the Abrams and its upgrades over the years I should think, usual type of things, uh, different languages, different versions. So we've got the Tusk 2 system um, and we've got the actual Tusk 1, okay? Now I'm no armor guy so I'm not exactly 100% sure about the difference. From what I can see, it is literally, is that box gonna obscure your view? Not quite, you're okay. Um, the, seems to be the difference, seems to be the, what's more on the upper turret than on the lower system, okay? It seems to be basically the same on the lower between Tusk 1 and 2, but the upper don't. But I am no armor guy, hands up, I don't know even what I'm talking about. I'm just what I've skimmed or gleaned off the net, okay? So, usual thing, road wheels. Uh, painting them on the outside. If you've seen any of our builds, we've got a great shortcut of doing those now. Polycaps, usual things. Uh, so we've actually got the drive shaft. Torsion um, bar suspension system, which I do like. It enables it to move very, very freely uh, and gives you some great movement on the bottom in the simplest way possible. But it looks like I've got quite a complex setup for these going in, some little bits going in there and all the rest of it. It's saying about using no glue on them, so I'm not sure how they're all gonna hold together. Okay, putting them in. We've got stuff to the inside, so they're allowing the torsion bar system to work. Uh, obviously, I presume that's the drive sprocket, is it? Or is it the idler? No, it's drive sprocket. Uh, uh, drive sprockets to the rear, idlers to the front. So I think that's probably the idler running at the front, uh, taking up slack. The rest of it all going in and uh, removing some details. So obviously, we've got various things down here. This is uh, optional parts where you can actually have them on there. So just make sure you have a good read through the manual and understand exactly what version you're doing, okay, before you make your way through, as I got caught out on a recent build. Uh, we won't talk about the Halifax. <laughs> uh, anyway, torsion bar suspension all going in, gluing those down into place. Again, I like that on these kits. Underskirt going down in there right the way under it, which is a nice little touch as well. This is that extra armor plating. It's part of the survival kit. IEDs underneath, it's got another layer of protection. Road wheels going on, dry sprocket, obviously you do all those last. Okay, a couple of little nicks and things you need to take out or open up some holes uh, down on here. Then onto the other one. Showing the photo etch with the top plate going onto the lower hull. Putting those in, again, great little touches. Windows, uh, sorry, windows going in, your periscopes and uh, the glass work into the headlights. Then we've got down here the exhaust grills uh, around the rear. 
and uh, amazingly working your way through. So all the lumps and bumps and all the little parts going on, the hatches, stove bins, all the rest of it going down on there. Uh, we got the ones onto the rear, which are the exhaust coming out the grill at the rear plates and everything else. Just putting those in and this is, this is the first part of obviously the armoured upgrade set down on here for the, the actual side skirts, which look like terracotta plates, looks like tiles. So there we go, that's all those tiles going in on there. It's quite complex how it goes through. It's not as simple as it looks there. It actually has got outer ones, then the midsection, and then obviously the one. It is that gap between them all. Or you can do the Tusk 1 set, which has the more traditional um, sort of block armor, which is what we did on the Bradley. Okay, so you've got the choices between the two, that extra layer on top of technically this. Okay, then the track system. So the track system, which is, I'm always um, keen to see how it is. And it looks like, how is that all going to work? It looks like there's a pin system going to go over it's quite a complex system down here okay so actually what you've got is a situation where you've got the cross uh, bars coming across then you've got to put the guide teeth into it okay once you've got the guide teeth into it then you can actually make up the lower plates for the pads so these are the actual bolted rubber pads that actually the abrams has then it's going to go on the top then you put the top ones in so these are the rubber ones to the inside to obviously for the road wheels and all the rest of it to grip onto and then you end up with it and then you cut it off that is actually so one two three four five technically six steps then you've got to cut it off and how many have you got to do it usually says down here how many you've got to do 81 so that is quite a complex way of doing the track and actually by the time you've messed around with all of that it's probably worth going down the aftermarket route because i'm sure doing the aftermarket ones go together quicker than that but one of those things. Something I've learned doing armor recently, and I do like doing armor, is that uh, tracks, uh, you have to treat, instead of treating them like an afterthought, you treat them as part of the build. And that's what's got over my psyche of doing tracks and road wheels. Road wheels now, we use the masking way of doing it. We'll probably get one in here, no doubt. Has it got one? It feels like it has, it's heavy enough. Uh, there'll be a mask in there for doing the wheels. That's really simple these days, instead of having to hand paint and all stuff like that on mask, okay? Tracks have always still been a bugbear for me because it's boring, it's long, it's laborious, and it's one of those things, sit down for a couple of evenings just doing tracks. But now I tend to try and think of them as it's part of the kit. It's a massive part of the kit. Let's face it, without tracks, it ain't a tank, okay? And I think that's what you need to do is treat them and weather them and, you know, all the rest of it as if it is a barrel or something else interesting. It's not a boring part, it is part of the armour. So anyway, talking about the different armor plates going on the side. So obviously Tusk 1 is the standard. Tusk 2, I'm just going to call it the tile system, are going to go on. I don't know if they are a type of ceramic tile system on there. Okay. About to get buzzed by a Chinook. Uh, one millimeter holes all over this one. And a jet. We've got maneuvers going on outside. It's bore you to death, but we're in a low level area. It gets quite interesting. So we've got jet fighters and helicopters going out there. And actually... That's an Apache. We've got an Apache going over the back. Okay, so what have we got? Uh, the main gun system going down in there as well. We've then got, obviously, all the areas you can imagine on the top turret right the way through. The gun barrel itself is a two-piece, okay, with the end on there and everything else. Showing you about putting some sticky tape just to hold it into place, okay, whilst you get it all in there. All right, and then we've got the bins onto the side, periscope system for the hatches, and then, obviously, it will be fitted onto the top turret. Amazingly, we're only halfway through. There's lots to this, as you can see. Then all the parts going on the top turret, um, the um, dischargers for the smoke grenade launchers, the thermal ones, all on there. We've got the top turrets, the gun system. Again, lots of fitting onto this one. There is lots of bits and pieces going on. Rear stowage bin going on there. Is that the air conditioner? Don't know. Yeah, air conditioned compressor system going down on there, which fitted to the turret, which is the old Abrams used to hang off the back. Okay, so that is, keeps the crews all nice and cool. Putting all the various parts in. The turret system, as you can see, obviously these are fully armoured ones and you've got all the glass work. This is all this business up around here. Um, you know, that's all of that one going in there. Again, really, really nice. Looks fantastic. Uh, we've got grill work going down in there as well as the glass and everything else. So more of the uh, reactive armour. That's what the tile system is on the side. Um, reactive armour all down there. Okay, so that's what we're doing is all this section up here going on there really nice indeed. Or obviously you can do without that version depending if you're doing this Tusk 2, Tusk 1. Again, why don't they just say Tusk 2, Tusk 1? But there we go. Uh, infrared identification panels on the front turret being fitted on 
okay and then working through with some of the smaller little items on the back okay so we've got the stowage items various things spare drives all of that being fitted down onto the actual thing and away we go okay so we've got some more little bits down here just on the painting you've actually got decal markings for no step and warnings and that showing you quite openly the rest of it is pretty blank there's no more markings on this guy i don't think a couple of them obviously for the uh, the unit insignias and the tail moves but there we go so there we go, what we've actually got down here is the 1st Battalion, 22nd Infantry Regiment in Iraq 2008. Okay, or you can have uh, E Troop, uh, 2 Squadron, 3rd Armoured Cavalry 2011. Okay, and then we've got down here, who have we got down here? 3rd Armoured Cavalry Unit, uh, FOB Hammer, Iraq, May 5th, 2011 beautiful one down there and then we've got my personal favorite purely because as I say it's got the little uh, decals on the front okay which isn't the box art one I thought it was oh it's on the side of the box okay we've got the um, 68th armored regiment uh, first brigade fourth infantry uh, Iraq okay there's no year on that one and then we've got the color call outs which the usual thing are now all going to be in AK colored call outs okay fantastic that seems a lot it seems a lot more than your standard type of build okay so starting it off just down in here no what we've actually got careful got a new blade in that so down here we've actually got we don't have a template i thought we'd have a template i won't get these out of the little bag uh, but as you can see we've got some very nice grills down in here beautiful done but they are not hollow it's not a true grill that you can see through okay so they are solid grill all right, and then on this guy as well, as you can see down in here. All right, again, we've got, these are the IFF plates. Already this is slightly bent. You want to keep this flat as possible. And then we do have proper grill work. This is for the mesh, which is down in the rear uh, stowage area behind the turret. Okay, and a few other little parts and everything else down on there. And we've got the markings, which we were talking about, which is Meng. They're quite basic, but again, very nicely done. No problem with those. I do like those. Some nice little options with that. Okay, let's just pop them back in the bag. And the mammoth job now of working our way through. So, we're going to do them in order as they come out of the, the system. So actually, what we've got... Okay, so, first sprue. I'll play with the camera a little bit. We'll just bring these down just a little bit, just so you can see. Try and square that up a bit. Okay, so this is sprue R, which has got the extra plate underneath. The standard armour, okay, and then this is the secondary layer, which will have the reactive armour on top of it, okay, and all the bits and pieces. Usual thing, looking around it for Meng, I've got no sign of any flash. The burring is very small indeed, which is like the sandwich layer down in there. All the parts, very clean, crisp molding on all of these and i try and run you around gently with this okay you can see it's all very nicely done no problem at all all of these things like the little hatches over here as you can see they're very nice and sharp and detailed and everything else like that i can't see any problems with that okay we do have ejector pin marks uh, dotted freely all around it but they're all in areas where we don't worry about because we're never going to see them and they're not going to be a factor anywhere on the build okay nice little touch down here we've got the actual ammo feed okay as you can see it here so we've got the actual ammo feed with some loose bullets coming off the top which i presume will be a ammo container <laughs> okay so Next up, we've got the top of the actual uh, hull itself, which has got a very nice texture. It's actually got the anti-slip pre-molded into it, and it actually is a really nice one. It seems to be a very nice scale effect for this anti-slip. Hopefully you can see, you catch it in the light and all the rest of it. But that actually is a really nice anti-slip coating. All the details are very nicely, very sharply molded. Even the number mouldings into this one, the stowage bin handles and everything else, really nice. Almost they look like they're, you know, aftermarket ones have been put on top because they, they look very three-dimensional, which is a very nice touch. We've got the barrel. Again, the usual bits and pieces you'd expect without more anti-slip coating down here for these bins. Really nice. Blind side, obviously, we're not worried about. But these are those open-up holes which you've got to take care of where it says for the Tusk 2 system. Okay, so we want to do those, open up those, and these ones down. It's nice how they've moulded it 
physically into, sorry, I'm all over the place with the camera today, uh, into the plastic, it actually says on here about it, so you know what it is. It hasn't just got the holes, it's actually telling you this is for the M1A2 um, SEP system, okay? So, very nice indeed. That's very good, okay. So top of the hull again, the anti-slip, it's very nicely molded into this one. Okay, as you can see, it's literally got a beautiful scale. I know it's dead flat, so it's not going to shine on the camera, even catching it off the lights, because it's dead flat. But generally, hopefully you can see, it's got a very nice texture to it. Nothing wrong with that at all. Really nice, and the weld bead as well around it, very nicely done, very much in scale, and all things like that. The underside of the turret as well, we've got nice detail, we've got a little marks here, little hatch marks type things down here, our access panel ones, down on the bottom, right the way round. So the detail goes all the way through this kit, even to the areas you'll never see. Okay, and again, we've got open up holes for the SEP system, and you might notice them down on here, if we catch them in the light, there we go, you can see them. Actually tells you, Tusk, Tusk, SEP, M1A1, actually has got what it is molded into the plastic down there, which is a really nice touch to see it actually written onto the mold itself. Okay, so that's really nice indeed. Okay, so change of bags. These bags are a lot thinner than the ones we were just cutting. These are a lot thinner. Okay, so what we've got down here is basically Sprue D. Okay, so Sprue D, again, really nice on these parts, working all the way along them, very cleanly molded, no problem at all. This is the actual uh, basket system for the back of the Abrams. Again, beautifully molded, the actual barrel down here. Very nice indeed. So we've got, looks like two types down here. Um, so we've got both of them. So not sure which one it would be. Okay, without going back through all the instructions, but again, really nice, very detailed. All the parts are really nice on this one, and again, the actual gates to the sprues, you know, they're medium size on this one, but where it is smaller, they are very nicely done. It's all sort of done in scale right the way through. All the handles, very nicely done, as you can see. So that is a very nice sprue indeed. Okay, we've got a max pair down here, because this is the wheels. Wheels and drive. Okay, so obviously it's a match pair, we'll just get one out of the way. All right, so down here we've got sprue A. Road wheels, again, beautifully done, some nice details in this one, as you can probably see how these actually are. Nothing wrong with those whatsoever. Very nice indeed, and even the smaller stuff, uh, as you can see it, and these cleats and the various bits and pieces, very nice. And then even down here, all of these really nicely done indeed. Very sharp, clean, crisp sort of molding with these. Unusual that you get this though, we've actually got a fault one here. Um, this little guy here has got a tab in it and that will never fit on, but usually if you give them a nudge, ooh, they come off, okay? But generally, no fault with it again. Very nice, very clean, crisp molding. These torsion bars and everything else, really nicely done. Maybe a little bit thick if I'm getting picky, Okay, if you can see how it joins the sprue to the part, quite chunky on this one for some reason. Usually they're a little bit more fine, and we have got a tiny bit of flash, but it's not on the mould. And I can't see any parts on the mould either that have got flash on them. So again, just something to be aware of. <clears throat> okay, so this is your armour. So this is probably the S, which is the more of the upgrade sprue, if you like. So we've got the plating, the rear, then we've got the actual tiling itself, the armoured uh, reactive armour system on the sides and all the bits and pieces. Then we've got the actual armoured glass windows and the various bits in there like that. The tiles themselves are very nice because they've actually still got little tiny um, uh, marks in between each tile where it's actually screwed to the surface or bolted in. So even the detail goes right down there. You've got one, two, three, four four little rivet marks on each one in between the areas. So that's a nice touch. It's even got them on the individuals. Okay, and then down here on the windows and things like that, as you can see the bolting, very nice all the way around, clean, crisp molding on all of that. And even down to the inside, which I don't think you'd ever see it, maybe a little bit, you can actually see the, uh, the wiring on the back of them as it sits down like that, okay, which is quite a nice touch. Again, we have got these little which are going to foul. This is the first time I've seen it. You can see these little dotted around. These would foul 
I think you're fit because they are taller. You can see it down here. I know I've got my finger out. You can see it just a little bit taller than the plate itself. So you, if your kit does have it, I'm not saying they all will, this might be just be a, an off one, but you're going to have to take them out before it'll fit on, I should think, to give you a nice clean fit. But again, you're being uber picky now. Okay, so thick bags. We've got different types of bags here, and I'm wondering if it's because um, different types of Abrams, the upgrade one to the standard one and things like that. Okay, so this one down here, we've got Screw G, Ooh, Timber. Okay, so down here, as I said, we've got the actual uh, rear grills for the exhaust system, some more of the little bits, some more grill work and everything else, and a few more torsion bars down in here. Okay, we've got the AC unit, I think that is, that goes up on the top. Again, very nice. The cabling's a little bit basic, if you like. The actual tow cables down here, I won't sure sort of shout about them too much. Okay, but again, very nice. It does seem to be, if I can be one little complaint here, but these, again, these, are, uh, check the pins here. I know they're only flick off, but what's amazing is that I haven't seen men do it before. Normally they are absolutely fine, um, but they have got them and they are going to fail. Also, they're ejector pins where they are, they are raised. So there is a little bit of a an issue on them. You can, it's not like they're flushed down and out of the way. There is some little issues this time and the first time I've actually seen it. Normally they're ejector pins on the men stuff. It's very either on par or just slightly sunk. These aren't, okay? And again, it just seems to be that the some of these are the ways that they'll put on. I don't know if you guys can see this one here. That's going to be a right pain in the proverbial to get off because they've moulded it on the side. So if this is the part, they've actually got the actual sprue tab to the sprue on top of it, which is great. But that's a very thin part underneath. So you've got to try and cut it off. Then you're going to be left with it. Then you've got to try and sand it in. Where if you just put it in the side and cut it, I think that would have been easier. Okay, so things like that are going to be a little bit of a headache on smaller parts like you can see around here okay and also look at the uh, the way that the ejector pin port onto the actual machine gun is it's very thick very heavy so for the first time it looks like they just move slightly off par usually their stuff is a lot more i wouldn't say it's not a fault i'm not picking fault with this but i'm just simply saying normally it's a little bit more refined there's a lot more care and attention into the placement of various bits and pieces on it, where this one just seems to be a little bit more clunky. But again, it, it's little picky things now. But as I say, um, you have to forgive me because this is at the top of the tree. So if it's got a fault, I'm going to call it. You know, there is no mercy on these kits. It's a 50 quid kit at the end of the day. It should be good. Okay. So again, you know, perhaps some little issues with placements. I don't know. Maybe not, all right? But generally, no problem with it at all. It's clean, it's crisp, it's nicely molded. Got a tiny bit of flash again. I wouldn't expect it, but we've got a little bit of flash just running on this edge, literally just down on here. Okay, it only takes that to get rid of it, but I wouldn't expect it to have on a main kit. So a little bit disappointing uh, as we're making our way through. The actual uh, 50 cal, no problem at all, uh, working its way through, but yeah like these as you can see it's all it's like bad cleanup like this guy here is another classic example of like why was are these on here they shouldn't even be on there they're even on the sprue for god's sake which means it cuts the hell out of you even handling the sprue okay where normally they are nicely done and flushed off but look at this part here this one's a huge great lump that is monster one that is that's like the mother of all ejector pins and you would have to cut that that's not a push off job because it's quite a thin part because it's grill underneath you're likely to damage the part so that would have to be cleaned and done properly the same with this guy here which all right it's a thinner one that one probably will there we go go but you know that's odd never seen it with main before okay so lower hull gives you an idea okay so usual thing, we have the old poly caps, which is fair enough, and the lower hull. Slightly different way of doing it, as you can see actually on this one. You can see it's not a, a universal, get rid of all of these, uh, a universal uh, system on here. Uh, it is obviously the new Abrams, it's the more modern one, so it's not that usual way of it going together. But again, we've got the armoured plating, um, survival one underneath is going to go at the front here, but you have got a nice weld bead going right the way across, okay, and literally no problem at all. Very clean, crisp moulding on all of this one. Picking up in the light there, you can see it. Uh, so yeah, 
Very good. Okay, so tell you what, let me do that because recently I've lost a few things in my builds when I've come to do them. Okay, glass, glass. Okay, so one thing we haven't got, which we always get with all the main kits, is a wheel template. Normally it's a bit of photo etch, it's rock hard, has a hole for doing the wheels uh, and spraying the wheels. Don't get it this time. Bit odd. Okay, the glass parts, there's no point looking at these because these are gonna be flat and they are clear. I can see them through here, no problem at all. Beautifully protected. And the track, which normally I would then show you how it goes together. But the interests of like, you know, got better things to do with my time. Um, I'm not going to do it on this particular one. Okay, so, but this is what we're talking about. We have one, two, three sprues of this joy. Okay, but as I said, you would treat it, but look, we, it's each individual pad and track, the actual bar system and the guide all the way through this. Okay, and this guy here, is the actual guide for putting it together. So you put the pads all in here, face down, and then you build onto it. Again, that looks quite shallow. It looks like it's prone, I would have thought, to jumping out of this. Okay, so that's the trouble with that, is you put all of these in, you knock one, and then putting them in. That's a very thin piece of plastic. You know, obviously, I do intend on building this at some point, it'd be nice, but what I'd probably do is actually double side sticky tape that down to stop it moving. Because if you jog it, they're all gonna fall out. But again, multiple, multiple sheets of this fun <laughs> again it's that thing by the time you've done that i think aftermarket might be quicker i don't know so there we go am i impressed well sort of um it's a lovely kit don't get me wrong it's beautifully detailed it's a brand new kit it's hopefully the engineering's fantastic a little bit concerned about ejector pins and i don't want to sound like i harp on about it because i've knocked a couple of very high profile kits and i get a lot of flack for it i get a lot of feedback saying oh yeah but it's part of modeling all I'm saying is I would expect when you're paying 50 pound a kit, uh, it's a brand new tool kit, Meng never have done this to me before. I wouldn't expect to have to go around and clean up parts in that way of removing uh, pin marks and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit disappointing. I think also this kit doesn't have the finesse, shall we say, of previous kits, and let's face it, I've built quite a few men kits now, uh, armor bits and pieces, um, and you know various things like the Bradley, it just went together. I had to do hardly anything to it. This, because you've actually got quite large sprue tabs where the part joins the sprue, they're in awkward positions as well, which are gonna be more clean up, more taking your time to go through. It's not just a case of snipping it off, quicksand, job in. The part's gonna need cleaning up, and they need sorting out before it goes onto the kit. So um, from that point of view, I am a little bit disappointed on it, okay? It's a nice touch having the photo etching, the bits and pieces, but again, they're bent. So, and that's because it's so thin. It'd be nice to have, perhaps have a slightly thicker bit for the parts, the things like the um, panels on the front, the infrared uh, panels. Uh, it would be nice to have those sorted out, the identification friend or foe, in something a little bit thicker, because they are thicker in real life. That's very thin photo etch, which is bent, which is gonna be a pain to get it to go flat, uh, and all the rest of it. So from that point of view, not exactly brilliant. Um, yeah, so a kit of two halves, shall we say. Pros, it's a fantastic kit, it's Meng, it's gonna to go together beautifully, okay, and it is a great task to have a version now, literally, so we've got the SEP system, uh, Tusk 1 and 2 kit, definitive, and I think that is gonna be your run to Abrams kit if you're ever gonna build an Abrams tank. Downside to it is, I would expect Main to have a little bit more finesse with the parts. I wouldn't expect to have the cleanup uh, and the various bits like that. And I don't get my little wheel template anymore, which I've got them and I've got my multi-size one and everything else. But again, is that like a little cutback or they just forgot about it this particular time? So there we go. That is Meng's 135th scale Abrams Tusk 1, Tusk 2.